Start Weight and Balance by clicking on the icon. The first time you launch the application, it should look about like this. The first screen will list the changes since the last version you operated, and behind that is the end user license agreement which will only show up the first time you run the program. But please be sure to read the license agreement carefully especially as it relates to the limitations on liability. Once you've cleared that, you'll see a few options the first time you run it. You'll be able to create a new plane, load examples, or watch an introductory video. If you want, you can load examples to see what some sample aircraft look like, but for purposes of this video, we're just going to focus on doing a new airplane. So if you tap on the new airplane button, that'll bring up a screen that looks like this, allowing you to input a wide variety of parameters that will be important to computing the weight and balance. The first thing is to provide an identifier for the new airplane. So for our example, we'll just use November 12345. So we enter that into the aircraft identifier field, and then we can go ahead and save this uh, to our phone by tapping the save button. For the purposes of the demo we'll use a Diamond DA-40 although not specifically the one that I fly and we'll use the POH that's available online to find the parameters. The first thing is the hull weight which is available in the weight and balance section of the POH. The arm can also be supplied but it's not in the POH directly, we just compute it by using the moment and the weight of the airplane, the empty airplane. Of course, these values should be the actual values for your airplane, not just the ones that are in an online POH. Some aircraft have a maximum zero fuel weight, which is the maximum weight uh, that the airplane can be without counting the fuel. But for the Diamond, there isn't one, so we'll just put in the maximum takeoff weight from the POH of 2535. Similarly, some aircraft have a max landing weight and the Diamond doesn't, so 2535 will work here as well. Next, the Diamond works on Avgas. If it worked on jet fuel, we could pick jet fuel and that's used for computing the weight in pounds of the fuel. And If you had multiple fuel tanks, you might name the main tank main or primary or something like that, but in this case we only have one fuel tank which has a capacity of 50 gallons. And then again from that same page in the POH we know what the arm is for the usable fuel. If we had an auxiliary tank, this is where we'd put it, but we don't for this airplane. Next, we get to the section where we actually put in the valid ranges for weight and balance for the airplane. The information we need is provided in the POH in both text and graphical form. Once we have it, we click on the Add Weight Balance Range button, and starting from the bottom of the chart, we're going to start entering in the information. So in our chart, for example, we start at the minimum weight and there is a range under which the aircraft can be flown in utility category. So we'll tell it that for this section we're going to be in utility category and we use the forward and aft uh, CG ranges for that particular weight. The next range we're going to add is going to be for the top of the utility range. And here the same forward and aft limits still apply on this particular 
aircraft model. Now above this is a normal category range, but the bottom of the normal category range is still the same values as the top of the utility range. So essentially we have to cre recreate the same line that we did above, except in this case it's in normal category. And then finally, we have to add a range which includes the top of the normal category, which has a slightly smaller valid CG range. When these numbers have been filled out, you can click on the chart and see a chart that will look just like the chart that was provided in the POH. Going back to config, the next thing we need to do is to create the weight and balance stations. These are the places that weight is actually loaded in the aircraft. The first station will occur at uh, the front seats. So we supply the arm. Again, this information is available in the weight and balance section. And we want two boxes since there are two front seats. And then we'll label this section as front seats. Next, we'll add another section. This will be for the rear seats. Again, using the arm from the POH, selecting two available boxes and labeling it as rear seats. Although there are really multiple baggage areas, we're going to sort of simplify things here and just put a single baggage area in based on uh, the extended uh, baggage model. As you can see, it automatically reorders the, the uh, loading stations by what their position is. And of course the baggage station only has one spot. Finally, there is a spot to be able to enter additional limitations. For example, if you look in the POH, there is a limitation which only allows the baggage compartment to carry 100 pounds. So, in this box, we'll enter the text that the baggage section, which this name should match exactly a name of a station above, is less than or equal to 100 pounds. We could also have put multiple stations with pluses in between their names to show that the combination of certain areas could only be 100 pounds. Now that we have all the data in, we can switch over and we'll get a picture of the airplane with the stations that we provided. Now we can actually start putting in real data. So imagine that we are taking a flight that's going to take four people in this airplane and we're going to have two passengers of 165 pounds each in the front seat and two passengers of 170 pounds each in the rear seat. And we'd like to load up with 50 gallons of fuel. Now as you'll see, the program shows us that we're over our maximum gross weight by a few pounds. And if we click on the chart, we can really see how that works with the CG range. Going back, we can just take a little bit less fuel on this flight, let's say 40 gallons, 
and see how that does. Now we're within the normal category weight restriction for the airplane. It's worth pointing out that the high end of this chart represents the weight in the configuration that you supplied. The low end, that is the lower X, represents where you would be if you flew the plane until you used all available usable fuel. I hope this has helped you learn how to use the Weight and Balance app, and much happy flying.